Hey there, welcome to this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to take a look at how to create this repeating pattern 3D cube type effect uh, in Adobe Illustrator. I wish I remember where I saw this. I saw it when I was browsing on Reddit maybe a couple weeks ago, something around about that time period. Um, and I think it was something that somebody created. Well, obviously somebody created it, but I think it was something that this particular user created. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. If I can find the original artist, I will have a credit to them and a link to some kind of social media, hopefully for them down in the bio of this video. Either way, it was a cool effect and it inspired me to go and try to create my own sort of uh, 3D cube layout, isometric style repeating pattern. I think it's really cool. I think you'll really like it. Let's jump into Illustrator right now and check this thing out. All right, well, here we are in Adobe Illustrator. I've got a fresh, clean document. It is sized 2560 by 1440, and we're going to kick this thing off by adding a background to this. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to select the stroke here in my tool panel, and I'm just going to get rid of the stroke by hitting the slash icon, and maybe for the fill, uh, well, you know what? Let's just, let's give it our gray. We want to fill this with a 27% gray so relatively dark and I'm just going to click a single time and say make it the size of my document 2560 by 1440 hit OK and then what I can do is use my align panel here make sure that I'm aligning to my artboard and I'm going to align horizontal vertical centers just like that we're looking good I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lock up my background layer by applying the lock and create a new layer here in fact I can double click and just name that layer BG or something for background and I'm going to go ahead and create a new rectangle so with the rectangle tool I'm going to click a single time and say I want a rectangle that is 95 pixels wide and 100 pixels pixels tall, so just slightly taller than it is wide. I can't really see it because, well, it's gray on gray here. So uh, let's go ahead and crank this up, make it a blue or something like that so it's easy to see. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this and I'm going to drag it over here just to get it to the center of where I'm working. I want to apply a shear to this to begin creating sort of the 3D cube effect. Uh, in fact, it may be easy here if we just go view and hide the bounding box just to get rid of all those extra transform handles and nonsense. I'm going to go object transform and I'm going to choose shear. Now I'm going to turn preview on. On. Basically, we want to keep it simple here. We want to shear along the vertical axis, and we want to set our shear angle to, let's try negative 30 degrees. So it's kind of extreme looking, but it's just right. And I'm going to hit OK. Now we want to flip this shape to make the other side wall of our little cube. We're going to do that by going Effect, Distort, and Transform, Transform. And here in Transform, I'm going to turn on Preview. I'm going to say, look, make one copy. I want to reflect it along the X. So I want it to sort of be flipped. See how it's flipping like that? And then I want to move it horizontally, the width of the shape. Now over here on my properties panel, I can see that the width is currently 95 pixels exactly. So I can say, hey, move it horizontally 95 pixels, but watch what happens. It moves it to the right. We actually want to move it to the left for our cube. And the way we do that is simply give this a negative value. So negative 95 pixels. And there you have it. We can hit OK. And we have the two sides of our cube. It doesn't look very cubey. It looks more chevron-y, but we're going to be changing that in a second. I need to break this up because right now it's all attached in just like one shape within this weird pattern. So I'm going to go object, expand appearance, and now within this group you can see I have two nice sides of my cube. In fact, I'm going to ungroup this by going object, ungroup, and I have two little sides to my cube. Looking good. I can select this side and make it like a lighter blue. And now you can see we have two sides for our cube. We need to make the top of the cube, however. And this is where we're going to use the pen tool and smart guides. So I'm going to go view and make sure my smart guides are turned on, which they are. Then I'm going to grab my pen tool. I'm going to change the fill color to something just different so I can see the top, make sure that it's working out for me. And because smart guides are turned on, Whenever I get near another anchor point, you can see it like lights the anchor point up. Now, if I can click on that, it's going to drop a new anchor point exactly on that and exactly on that. And then I can just hold down shift and bring it right back across and connect it to my original point. So we have sort of half of the top of the cube. How do we complete the cube? Well, again, using that transform game. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to go effect transform. I'm going to turn preview on. Now, in this case, it's going to just push a second triangle off to the left, which we don't want. That's happening because of this horizontal movement. So let's just set that back to zero. What I do want to do is not reflect this along the X, but reflect the Y. The idea is if we can flip the triangle up and get it to set exactly where it like exactly on top of this triangle, we'll have a perfect top to our box. So let's reflect Y, and then we're going to begin pushing it upward using vertical. I'm going to use the height of my triangle. So this is 54.848, and it's important that you get everything after the decimal point. So we're going to say vertical. Let's go 54.848. You're going to see it's going to push it down instead of up. So what was the trick? Well, if we wanted to move in the opposite direction, just make it a negative number, and there we go. We've got the top of our box. We're not quite done because we want to hit OK, and we want to go object, expand this appearance. We got two triangles here. Here. Maybe we'll ungroup this as well. And then what we're going to do is mesh or merge both these triangles together using Pathfinder. We can just tell these to uh, be united and be 
one beautiful top to our little cube. And just like that, we've drawn a cube here in Adobe Illustrator. Now I want to fill my cube with color shades of gray. There's a reason I used gray as my background, um, but I want to fill this with shades of gray as well. So for the top of the cube, I'm going to go to my color panel. I'm going to say, look, give me grayscale and let's go with like 10% uh, gray for the top. Very light. The not so shadow side of the cube, we're going to go grayscale, maybe 42%. Let's go with that. And then for the shadow side of the cube, let's go grayscale and we'll go a little bit darker here. We'll go like 55%. So not like crazy, crazy dark but definitely enough that we're seeing some good contrast between each side of our little cube. Now what we want to do is create a shadow on the front and side of our cube and then a little sort of hole to complete our isometric effect before we create the pattern. So we're going to go view and make sure snap to point is turned on. This is going to be super duper helpful for what we're about to do. I'm going to zoom in on my cube. I'm going to grab the top of the cube using my selection arrow and I'm going to hold down my alter option key and just duplicate a copy of it out, right? Next, I want to grab my direct selection tool and this is where snap to point helps. You want to use the direct selection tool, select Select any of your anchor points. It's going to drag the whole shape. And as you move, move over to the cube, it'll snap it right to the front edge of the cube. That's great. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate another one of these. And I'm going to pull this to the other side of my cube. So right over here, click, snap to right in place. I'm going to fill both of these shapes with a black to black gradient. And you'll see how this is going to work here. So I'm going to say like black to white. But what did I say? I said black to black, right? So I'm going to go full black. And then for this color stop, also black. And in fact, I may make it more of a rich black by going RGB and saying black. So that's really, really black. Then I'm going to take the left black color stop here and set the opacity to 0%. Right. So now we sort of have a black to transparent gradient. That's nice. I'm going to set the midpoint here to like 75 ish percent just to really tighten up and control how much black shadow we're seeing. I'm going to move the angle. Let's try like 120 degrees. See, that looks like it. we got a nice shadow coming out of the, the front of our cube now. And we're going to I drop this exact gradient over to the side of the cube. There we go. But in this case, I want this to be like maybe a 60 degree angle will make sense here. Right. That's coming out of the side of the cube. And I want to change the opacity of these. This right here is the shadow side of the cube. So my shadow on this side should be a little darker. So let's set this to like 25% opacity. And then for the shadow over here, it's going to be super duper light. By the way, I'm down here in my transparency panel. You could also do this up here in the opacity portion of your properties panel. I'm going to set this to like six or 7% opacity. So just very slight, very subtle. So if we back out a little bit, we've got a cube and we've got two shadows for it as well. Now what I want to do is again, duplicate the roof of my cube by holding down the alter option key, dragging out a copy. Once more, I'm going to use direct selection. And now what I want to do is I want to click this to the front of this, uh, this little square. So you can see, we can't really see the front edge unless we have it selected. Uh, but those anchor points to which we're going to be clicking, they are hovering out there. So I'm going to grab one of my corners and I'm just going to move until I feel it snap. And yep, right there, we're snapped right into place. This is going to be sort of a hole that's sitting in front of the cube, just to add an interesting visual element to our pattern. Again, with the direct selection tool here, let's select like the rightmost uh, anchor point right there and just delete it. So we're left with a little triangle. We're going to select this triangle, go object path, and we'll try joining this just to make sure the whole path is joined off and, and together. Then once more, we're going to use that effect transform because we want to flip this again. We want it to look like a square hole. I just want it to be split in half easily. So I'm going to say preview one copy. We're going to reflect X, not reflect Y. We're not going to change where it moves vertically. We're going to change where it moves horizontally. And we're going to again, use the width of this. So 95 pixels should line me up exactly. 95 pixels, there we go. Hit OK. Again, object, expand that appearance, and then probably also ungroup. Uh, again, that's object, ungroup. And you can see we've got two triangles here in our layers panel. In fact, I might select these and move them up because these two, these two paths, those are our two shadows around our cube. All right, so with these two shapes, we want to take the left triangle here and we'll fill this with like a 40% gray and the right triangle we're going to go with a slightly lighter, maybe like 32% gray, something like that. So right away, if you tell yourself that it's a square hole in the ground in front of the cube, it's already kind of looking like that, despite the fact that we know it's really just two differently colored triangles. We're going to try to sell the effect a little bit more with... Uh, a gradient to add shadow to our hole. So I'm going to select or shift click both of these triangles to select them both. I'm going to go edit copy and then edit paste in front to duplicate them. I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool and I'm going to sample that black to transparent gradient that we were using. Doesn't look good because we need to adjust opacity and angle and everything like that. Let's take the left triangles gradient here and let's change the angle. 
Let's try like negative 110 degrees. That's about where I want it to be. I'm going to constrain the shadow a little bit more. You can really kind of have fun with how you create your shadow because really nothing's right, nothing's wrong. As long as it kind of sort of looks believable, you'll be doing all right. I am going to set this opacity to like 50% and then I'm going to take the gradient here for the right side of the hole. This one I'm going to set to like, uh, let me try like negative 90. So we're really getting some shade down in like the, the pit of the hole, so to speak. I'm going to drag the transparent up a little bit, maybe something like that. And I'll probably set this guy to like, I don't know, 35% opacity. Let's try that. Maybe, eh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe we'll try 45. How does 45 look? That's not too bad. Something like that I think will work for us. And if it's looking a little too pillowy soft, it's just going to be a matter of, you know, squeezing the, the transparency stop against the black stop a little bit more and then choosing sort of where you want it to where you want it to meet up and and look like a little bit more of a hard shadow in there and actually that probably that looks kind of decent i kind of like that i might expand this soften that up just a little bit maybe something kind of like that that might work for me and if you like what you've got you might want to play with some of the shadows a little bit more but if you like generally speaking what you've got select all of the shapes that we just created and go object group so you can see they're now all contained in this one nice little package for us now the reason that i've gone with gray and not a color you're going to see in just a second because i want to be able to colorize this anything very easily. Let's create our pattern. So we select this, we go object, we go pattern, we say, hey, let's make a pattern. Now it's going to say, look, a new pattern's been added to the swatches panel, any changes made, yada, yada, yada. Okay, thank you, Illustrator. Oh, that's great. Let's move our swatches over here to get them out of the way. And we're starting to see how our pattern would look. Now, if you want to change anything about the pattern, the way it's laid out, uh, you can do that here. You can change the width and height. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. Maybe I'll change copies here. Let's try like five by seven seat with a few more of them, see what it really looks like. That's pretty nice. I kind of like it. I like the spacing. I like the fact that it looks somewhat tight. Uh, that's good. So after we do that, I'm going to come up here and choose done. We haven't placed the pattern. We're just looking at what the pattern is going to look like when we apply it. And sure enough, here in our swatches panel, right there, you can see our pattern. That's looking that's looking pretty nice right there. I'm going to just slide this up and let's, uh, let's use the pattern. So let's grab our group here and we're just going to move it uh, off screen. Maybe I'll shut it off altogether just so we're not distracted by it. I'm going to unlock the background layer and select it. And I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard, edit copy, because we're going to use it a couple times here. So here on layer two, let's go edit paste in front. So here's our first copy of the rectangle and let's apply as a fill, not a dark gray, but rather our new pattern, which I didn't even give a name, but you can give it a name in that pattern creation dialog box. Let's click, uh, click that and you can see we've got all of our shapes looking pretty good. I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller here so we're not distracted by it. You know what? Maybe I'll close it all together. There's a lot we can do with it at this point. We could use our direct selection tool and select like the top anchors and pull it up to add more, more of the pattern up there. Maybe pull over to add a little bit more pattern here and then we can select select the overall shape and just move it and say, hey, you know what? I really, maybe I want the pattern to begin something like there, right? And then we know with the direct selection tool, let's expand this side out a little bit more, just like that. And then we would have to mask this. So we could select this rectangle shape, double click on this blank thumbnail. I'll keep clip checked on and I'm going to go edit paste in front and I'm going to set my fill to just bright white and it's going to show my entire pattern. And then I'm going to click here to get back to my normal editing mode. And here's my pattern masked within my document looking good. Now, this doesn't, uh, it's still a very gray, bland pattern. How do we, we, how do we begin colorizing it? Well, first of all, I'm going to add a brightness control and we're going to do that by pasting our rectangle in place again. And I'm going to fill this with about a 70% gray. So there we go. 70%. That's good. I'm going to set this to the blend mode of overlay, which is going to increase contrast and it's going to darken things up. Right. And I am going to just reduce the opacity of this to zero. We'll make sure we have that rectangle selected and then we'll just reduce the opacity to zero. So we don't see it. We can add add it later if we feel like we need it. Now what I'm going to do is go edit paste in front again. Remember, we still have that gray rectangle copied to our clipboard. And what I'll do here is choose my color. So I can go RGB or CMYK, whatever. Uh, let's go with like a blue. Maybe we'll go with a blue like this. And here in the transparency panel or up here, I can click on the word opacity and change the blend mode to color. And you can see that because we're using this gray, it, the color is going to map itself onto the gray in all the various shades we chose. So that's really cool. And if this is too bright, I can go to my, my brightness controller here and just say, you know what, let's uh, bring the opacity of that up a little bit, make it more of a dark blue. Or maybe I don't like blue as much. Maybe I want it to be more of an orange. Maybe I want it to be lighter. Maybe I want it to be green. Maybe I want it to be more of a pink. And you can wholesale change the color of what you're working on very, very easily uh, by doing stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. That's a little bit too saturated. So maybe we could try shutting off our contrast and, and darkness control. But I actually think that makes it better. What we probably need to do 
go to HSB, reduce the saturation a little bit, something like that. Maybe reduce the brightness a little bit and something like that. We're beginning to get uh, more of an effect. I think I'm going to go with a blue, maybe like a flat blue like that. I kind of dig that. And you can see it's just a, a really cool way to go about creating this effect. I might pump up the opacity of my overlay layers to infuse a little, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more darkness. And you can see creating this isometric multi-cube, multi-hole in the ground style pattern is uh, pretty easy and it's a pretty cool finished effect. And of course, maybe if you decide the shadow in the hole needs to be a little darker, you could make it, you know, just bump that shadow up a little bit. If you want the shadow side of your cube to be a little darker, make it a little bit darker. You can go through and you can push and pull and play with things uh, and make it exactly how you want it to be. And I guess before I head out the door, I wasn't planning on showing this, but I might as well because it's pretty pertinent to what we're doing. If you go window swatches, you can double click on your pattern to enter back into a pattern editing mode. And what we can do is select like the front side of our cube and say, you know what, let's make it a little bit darker. Let's make that 65% darkness. Uh, and maybe the shadow here, we need to make this a harsher, more defined shadow, right? In fact, if I come over here and open up the pattern, I can get to the left side of that triangle itself. And maybe this needs to be more like a 55% darkness. That side of the hole needs to be a little darker. And for the shadow on top of it, the shadows just can't be as soft as they are. They don't look realistic enough, right? And then I can go back to the other side of the shadow. I can say, you know, make that a little bit more of a harsh shadow, something like that. And then I can come over here, hit done, and it's going to bring me back and everything is updated here in my document. Now the shadows don't quite line up. So maybe I would go back in and adjust and tweak that a little bit more. In fact, I'll just do it really quickly here because, well, because I can, because it's that easy, just something like that. That looks good. Maybe I'll even reduce the overall opacity of this, knock it down to like 85%. I'll do the same here with the other side, knock it down to 85% or so hit done. And there we go. We're back to where we were. Our entire pattern just updates when we edit the pattern through the swatches panel, just like that. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. If you enjoyed it, if you got this far in the tutorial, number one, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you never miss any videos to come. Also, if you do Instagram, upload your design, your artwork, your pattern to Instagram. I would absolutely love to see it. You can tag me in the image by using uh, my handle at Tutvid. Actually tag me in the photo because then it rests in all of my tagged images with my regular just tag notification and a comment. It goes away and I don't get to see a lot of that stuff. But if you tag me in the image, I can see it. I can give you a like. I can give you a comment. The whole nine yards. It's a beautiful thing to see. I absolutely love to see what you create. Uh, and for, I guess, using the pattern maker and creating shapes and faking 3D with isometric design and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.